Hello friends and fellow collectors, you have joined me for another Diecast Emporium video. In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at one of the new wheel loaders for 2023 from Diecast Masters. It's the Highline Series 1-50 to scale Caterpillar 972XE for Advanced Drivetrain Wheel Loader. Item number 85683. Again, this is one of five new wheel loader models that are coming out this year to add to your collection. Removing the box... We now see the white nylon bag, which protects the metal tin. If you are new to collecting Diecast Masters Highline Series models, they don't come in a box, but rather they come in a metal tin. There's a photo of the scale model of the machine. New for this year, again, is a uh, code for you to scan on your tablet or your smartphone. Doing so will bring up the current CAT model catalog. On the top... We see the 972XE loading a dump truck. On the back, we see it working on a stockpile of material. For those interested in the information about the real machines, such as its dimensions, operational specifications, and engine detail, please feel free to pause my video now and you can read that for the rest of us. We'll continue the unboxing by popping the top. Again, the catalog is digital, so there's no physical version of it anymore. Stick your fingers in the supplied finger holes. There is the wheel loader sitting very nicely in the bottom piece of black foam rubber. There are no work tools. There's no accessories. Uh, there's nothing that you need to insert or put on your model. In fact, once you have it out of the tin, you are ready to display it. All right, with the model out of the tin, let's take a look at some of the details and decals. Again, this is a big step up from the previous M version of the 972 wheel loader that we've seen a few years ago. We have some decaling that make up the side venting. Again, it is a decal. It is not perforated or indented. You have the Cat Modern Hex logo, 972XE, and then your Assert Engine badging right here. You also have uh, Don't Slip decals. Speaking of which, outside the cab door, you'll find some etched area for anti-slip texturing. The handrail here is metal. The railings that make up the mirror post and assembly, those are high-quality plastic. On the back, here's the large counterweight, which has some lights on it. This is one of the uh, inaccuracies on these models, and that is the cat logo seen here on the engine cover. This should be a modern hex cat logo and not the logo seen here. So the logo should look a lot like that. Continuing on, we can see the uh, door detailing. Another unfortunate part about these loaders, at least it's unfortunate in my opinion, and that is the fact that the operator figure seen here with his high visibility vest and pants he is permanently affixed inside the cab. You cannot lift the top of the cab off or take him out. The only way around that is, and this is completely up to you, your discretion, disassembling the model from the bottom up and working your way towards the top. Again, not something you should have to do on a high-quality replica, and it is unclear as to why Diecast Masters has gone back to, at least in the case of these five wheel loaders, of having the operator figure permanently installed in the cab. Finishing up with our detailing, you can see the detail inside the wheel hubs. They do have some silver bolt head detailing inside. And then there's the, the tread patterning on the tires. This loader has a smooth rehandling bucket. So it doesn't have any teeth. It's got a smooth edge on it. And a single Z-bar linkage. There are also some forward-facing work lights and a plastic windshield wiper along with your forward-facing lights towards the front. That'll do it for the details and decals. When we come back, we'll put the loader through its paces and check out some of its functionality. We begin our functionality test by seeing how well the loader rolls, and I can tell you it, it rolls well enough. You can steer it via the center-mounted articulation joint. This does have a little bit further range of play than the 966 version of the model does, but again, it is still a bit of a shallow angle and one that I'd like to see improved if Diecast Masters revisited this model. All right, again, there's no drive shaft as there should be, so that's another improvement that could be made. The rear axle oscillates as it should, while the front one is fixed into position. Let's move now to the main loader functionality. As you can see, it will go up to here. However, my cylinders do seem to bleed down and won't hold the weight of the bucket. You can curl the bucket itself back to here, and your dump angle is also a big improvement from the M series version of the 972, so that is good to see. On the lower end of things, if we put it down, you can achieve somewhat of an aggressive cut angle, which is good to see. However, there is almost no carry angle on the lower end of things. 
Okay, that's the functionality. Let's now see what the loader looks like when it's loading a 150 scale dump truck, which is one of the display possibilities with any wheel loader. So here's a Diecast Masters uh, Western Star dump truck. So here we go. As you can see, it is high enough to get over to the side. And again, I will do multiple different angles so you guys can see. So there we go. And then also you can tilt the buck bucket forward all the way to dump out your material. So in that aspect alone, the display looks good with a dump truck. Another option you have available to you is to display it on a low boy trailer. So let's bring in our low boy. Again, this is another Diecast Masters model. It's a Western Star heavy haul Tritum tractor with an XL120 HTG Specialized low boy. So let's bring him in. The only disadvantage to displaying this loader as a low boy load, again, is the fact that you can't take the operator out of the cab. And even your most greenhorn operator, you would never uh, have him riding in the cab of a machine as it goes down the road at 80 miles an hour. All right, before we sign off, let's compare the 72 to a couple different 966 versions. So the biggest difference optically, without examining things closer, is that both versions of the 966, so we have the 966 right here, and the GC version of the 966, both of these have a rock bucket, whereas the 972, the subject of today's video, has a smooth re-handling bucket. Also, the tire pattern is a little bit different. You can see the 972 has the same tire pattern or very similar to that of the 966, while the GC version of the 966 has a much more aggressive tire pattern, as seen here. Also, the 972 has a little bit different cab design and engine cover design than the GC has. If I can hold those up too, so you can compare and contrast those two. All right, guys, that'll do it for this Diecast Emporium review. Here's a recap. Whether you go with one of the smaller loaders like the 966 or you go with the 972, these are notable improvements from the previous version of this model, which would have been the M series of these. A couple things that were overlooked that I would like to see fixed and or changed is the modern hex logo on the engine cover and the fact for the operator to be removed from the cab. But most all of the functionality is exceedingly good with the exception of, again, the carry angle, which could be improved. That'll bring this video to a close. If you want to see a review of one of the 966, click here. If you want to see a playlist of a bunch of die cast wheel loaders, click the playlist seen here. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, take care, be well. I'll see you in the next review.